What's up everyone, Alex here. There's a good chance that you probably have never heard of Rune Factory before. While Exceed has re-released 2012's Rune Factory 4 as Rune Factory 4 Special recently, the series has gone under most people's radars due to its proximity to farming games. But what if I told you that what makes Rune Factory different is how it blends elements of fantasy action JRPGs with the crafting and farming elements of other farming games? This basically means that everything, from your combat, farming, and fishing skills, down to the crops you harvest, as well as the soil itself, have levels that determine your skill proficiency or the quality of said materials. This might all sound like anyone playing Rune Factory 5 will be in for a grindy experience, but the reality is far from that. In fact, it's actually the most approachable Rune Factory that's ever been made if only the developers could address its performance issues. This review was made possible by viewers like you, so please leave a like, post a comment, then subscribe to the channel. Rune Factory 5 is an action JRPG with a deep emphasis on crafting and farming gameplay, developed by Hakama and published by Exceed, who provided this Switch review code. The game casts you as an amnesiac hero who stumbles upon the town of Rigbarth. Having no recollection or memory of who you are or where you came from, the citizenry encourage you to join the town's rangers in the hopes of discovering who you are while trying to thwart an encroaching evil that poses a huge threat to the land. This mention of a looming threat might surprise you. After all, most farming games attempt to portray the idea of idyllic freedom by way of its themes and design. But the reality is, is that most farming games are actually anything but that, and some players find themselves spending much of their short in-game day min-maxing what to do so they can achieve their goals efficiently. This is mostly because other farming games build in mechanics to prevent you from doing everything you want on a daily basis which is a way for its developers to build in consequences. Rune Factory 5 features a much more forgiving system that allows you to replenish your energy, called RP, significantly by eating food or incrementally by letting time merely pass, in addition to a longer in-game day that allows you to do a ton more. To be clear, these in-game days don't reflect the time outside of the game like Animal Crossing, and one full day in Rune Factory 5 lasts for 48 minutes, which is twice longer than the days in the previous game. Engaging in the game's activities repeatedly will make your RP consumption more efficient over time. For folks who would rather keep battling monsters and exploring dungeons, I should point out that partaking in activities outside of combat will affect your combat stats. This probably makes you wonder how easy it is to get acclimated to Rune Factory 5's crafting and farming gameplay. Thanks to a clever combination of request board tasks and main story events, it's actually really easy for anyone to learn its nuances. The game starts you off with a fairly basic combat tutorial, which then scurries you off to a bit of exposition, after which it'll teach you the basics of farming. Shortly after, you'll be introduced to a request board that serves as tutorials that unlock many of Rune Factory 5's other features, though I should point out that none of this is immediately required. This reinforces the idea that the game really just wants you to take everything in at your own pace, and because Rune Factory 5 has no overall time limit to speak of, the whole experience simply feels liberating and freeing. While I've lobbed much praise on Rune Factory 5 thus far, I have to talk about some of its glaring shortcomings. Despite its day one patch, Rune Factory 5's Western release is hampered by performance issues due to some rendering bottlenecks. The game takes a performance hit each time you load into a new area, with its frame rate stuttering a bit at the beginning, then managing to balance out shortly afterwards. There are also moments in the game where the soundtrack would just drop entirely, which is a shame given that it's got a good track list. I should add that these issues happen regardless of whether the Switch is docked or being played in portable mode. From a personal standpoint, I don't find these performance issues to be a hindrance in my enjoyment of the game. 
but there's certainly a part of me that wished that these were either addressed before its Western launch or that the developers actively communicated that they're continuing to optimize the game's performance. And then there's the constant badgering by shopkeepers to help you out while browsing through their wares, which reminds me of antsy waiters who want to hurry you along so they can serve the next customer. Something that contrasts with how relatively easy it is to learn the nuances of Rune Factory 5's gameplay is how it handles the main story. The game's menus keep track of the current goings-on in the main story, which also means that it may just display things that have already happened. The real indication that you can continue the main story are the large beacons that show up on the map where you can trigger new events. On one hand, I can understand why the main story is designed this way. It hides potential spoilers from players who simply want to advance the narrative. However, there are days where these main story beacons don't show up, and it can easily confuse players who have been conditioned to look for these types of indicators on the regular. With regards to its narrative, Rune Factory 5 feels a bit restrained when it comes to the portrayal of its plot. Your identity, as well as the looming threat in the world, are slowly addressed over time, focusing more on providing you with new areas to explore and characters to meet. You won't find a multi-layered story here, and I suspect that this is all in service to make all aspects of Rune Factory 5 accessible based on what the player wants to do at any given time. And while its narrative isn't aiming to rival the top-shelf stories found in beefier, high-production-value JRPGs, I found it more than enough to keep me going. Since the game doesn't really have an in-game timer of sorts, I estimate that the main story will take you between 25 to 30 hours to complete, if you focus on it, though you can certainly be distracted by the game's many activities. But the biggest reason why you'll probably want to play Rune Factory 5 are the various characters you'll meet and interact with. One aspect of the series that newcomers might not know about is its ability to create meaningful relationships through a combination of narrative storytelling and gameplay. Shortly after arriving at Rigbarth, you'll be given a tour of the town's shops and facilities and meet the many people who call this village their home. From the resident mayor slash doctor Simone, to Murakamo, the owner of the town's inn and spa, there's plenty of colorful and interesting characters to get to know. And thankfully, it's very easy to form friendships, and if you're the type who's looking for it, relationships too. Much like games featuring a social link type system, Rune Factory 5 keeps track of your regular interactions with everyone in town. In order to improve your relationships greatly, you're also able to give folks presents of all sorts. Yes, that includes those pickled turnips you just made at your cooking station. You're also able to take up to three additional townsfolk with you during your dungeon runs, though I should caution that they'll leave if it gets too late in the day. Not only that, you can even do activities, such as fishing, alongside others too. And if you manage to build your relationship high enough, you might even get married and later have a child as well. All of these activities wouldn't mean anything if Rigbarth's townsfolk didn't make you feel anything. Because you are introduced to so many characters early on, you may find yourself gravitating towards specific people already, which is a good sign that the game's slowly sinking its teeth into you. I think there's something to be said about how Rune Factory 5's characters are written in such a way that their backstories enhance the story you're uncovering in Rigbarth. One other aspect of Rune Factory 5 that I want to talk about is its visual presentation, which I am in love with. Performance be damned, Rune Factory 5 is a gorgeous looking game with a strong art direction. By blending both detailed texture work with landscape design that evokes the best of the classics in the 3D action RPG genre, Rune Factory 5's art direction is a masterclass in what you can do with so little. While the lands beyond Brigbarth are segmented into different zones, each area feels big and explorable, just begging for you to discover what lies beyond. When you pair this with a fun battle system that's easy to pick up and play, you've got an ambitious title that attempts to do a lot more than what the Switch could handle. Again, performance be damned. Speaking of its combat, 
Rune Factory 5 has a wider range of weaponry than any game in the series before it, though you'll easily overpower enemies shortly after a few hours of playing, even on the hardest difficulty. In general, I feel like Rune Factory 5's combat is tuned in such a way that it tries not to detract from the other potential activities you can engage in, purposely implementing a more approachable combat system that helps reinforce its more relaxed mood. Despite its hiccups, I can definitively say that Rune Factory 5 made me a fan of the series. At its heart, Rune Factory is all about finding your place in the world, and in the town of Regbarth, where everybody knows your name, it'll be easy to get lost in your regular chores, and you'll soon start to look forward to a brand new adventure every day with your new friends and loved ones. For JRPG fans who have been clamoring for a different kind of experience that still has that small tinge of calamity, approachable combat, crafting and farming mechanics that don't overwhelm, as well as the many ways to further deep interpersonal relationships, Rune Factory 5 serves up a little slice of life that may even enrich your soul. But now, I want to hear what you think. Will you be giving Rune Factory 5 a chance? Are you interested in Rune Factory now? Post your thoughts in the comments below and let's talk about it. And if you like JRPGs, Japanese games, indie titles, and more, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.